Interphase Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home. friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. I'm your host Paul Jass and thank you for joining us. Uh, we're into the season of events, uh, usually two or three on a Saturday or a Sunday as we move into the latter stages of, of November and into December. I mean there's just events all over the place and we'll, we'll hit a bunch of them for you. Uh, the second part of the show today we'll be talking about the Garrett Players. They have uh, their most recent play going on here soon so we'll talk to them. The first one though is a kind of an iconic event I think for 61 years the Leicester Kiwanis has put on not always on the first Saturday in December where it is now I'll use that first Saturday in December but they've always put it on uh, late November early December their big pancake day which of course Kiwanis is a civic organization uses the funds predominantly to help underprivileged children and this year is no difference coming up this Saturday, uh, first Saturday in December, as we say, and uh, it, it's, it's going to be a great time out at Lancaster High School from 7 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. I've got a couple of ladies here who would be glad to talk about it. They're kind of the honchos of this entire event. I've got the chairman, Joan Miller, and her co-chairman, Lackey Joyce Cox here, who together they crack a mean whip with the uh, Lancaster Kiwanis. So ladies, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Are, Thank you. Are we in good shape here? We got everything lined up. I, I mean, think so. Are you ready to flip pancakes? I'm ready. I'm ready. We'll be doing it this year. Yep. Uh, it's uh, Saturday, December 7th from 7 to 1. And uh, a fun time. It's a Saturday. At, I'm always amazed that uh, when it's over, I think, you know, kind of, how do we do that? Right. How, how did Likes or Kiwanis do that? You guys have done it enough years. It's it's an amazing event, isn't it? It is. And, and it's kind of a... Um, well-oiled machine and I came in here I certainly didn't make it up it's always ready to go and goes and they have big griddles that they take out to the high school and they have a conveyor belt that they use to put the pancakes Everett on. Everett Wogan that's the name on that. Yeah Everett. what year do you think? Um, it was in the, in the 50s, 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 50s late 50s, 50s I he, think. He built it's a conveyor there. belt. There's a sign on it that you can yeah. read it every year yeah but that, that, that uh, if you've never been there or even if you have been there it's kind of fun to see the kids their eyes kind of light up and they watch the pancakes just roll out off that it's kind of fun to see. And the, and the Kiwanis member who is stationed at the end of the conveyor <laughs> has to be very alert. That's we, we <laughs> make a point of uh, trying to catch them periodically. We tell them if you drop them, you eat them. Oh, okay. You know, obviously, neither of you girls have had no, to do that job. I haven't you done look, that job. You have look you good. Ever done that job? And Joyce, your job is kind of the, uh, you're the honcho over, uh, more or less, you do lots of things on this, I know, but your, your job is kind of getting the help. And I know you, you kind of assign Kiwanis members to do that. You have several key clubs you, you go through. It's, a, again, kind of a well-oiled machine, but you have a, a, lots of moving parts on that, right? Yes, and I was actually reluctant to take on the role when Joan asked, but having been involved in it and seeing what they do, and like she says, it's a pre, it's already done. I don't have to make anything up. I have to strong arm some volunteers, <laughs> but not often yes. because they're yeah. so willing to donate their time and talents yeah. to yeah. her to our great festival. Well, uh, we'll donate time. I'm not sure how much talent is <laughs> donated here if you've seen this work. But but when when again, you just look at Kiwanis members, they're, they're again back in the back. They make the batter. They they make the pancakes out front. They seat people. They give people seconds. Uh, I mean, right. there's just almost the entire club is involved. Right. I look back and um, we had 55 members volunteer last year from the club and over 60 key clubbers. Amazing. So we really rely on the high school kids to help, and it's a heck of a lot of fun working with them. And, They're and awesome kids. Before we move on to talk about some other things about Kiwanis, you had a numbers of some some of the amounts of things that just in one day. All right, is yeah, used. yeah, seven to one. Last year we went through 410 pounds of pancake mix and 250 pounds of sausages. That's a lot. 
That's a lot of a lot of set from seven to one, so relatively a short time right, frame. Right. Right. Yeah. Years ago, they used to do it all day long. Seven to seven. Um, I that don't was know. A long day. <laughs> right. That was I, a long I can't day. even imagine. <laughs> now, now <laughs> we, we talk we about things it. that, uh, and, and again, you you have different things out there that show what these funds that go for. But one of the things we'll talk about that was just very prevalent in the last couple of months at Langston Kiwanis was the All Abilities Park come open. Now, obviously, far more funds than than were right. needed than than just this, but. This this is a big part of it, and it was a hundred years for Lancaster Kiwanis this past year. Your husband, Craig, was the past was the past president, but the president during that year, and uh, that, that's a pretty amazing thing out at right. Hunter Trace. So, well, we reached our hundred year, and a couple years ago, we decided we've got to do something on our hundredth year anniversary that is a bigger project than usual, and um, got a lot of ideas and. We ended up partnering with the Lancaster City Parks and Rec, and they had an idea of, of building an all abilities, multi-generational playground. And the reason it really fits those categories is it has that solid rubber surface underneath all the playground equipment. So Kiwanis partnered with them, and we fundraised for it and made it our 100th year um, project big project biggest project we ever did in 100 years e easily easily so we're not done yet but the playground equipment and is there and opened on October 29th and it's so. getting to be you know kind of not good weather to get out and see it but if you have an opportunity it's out right uh, before you get to the traffic light at Hunter Trace there's a nice sign a park sign right there that looks like all the other parks what is it right. called Hunter Park it says Kiwanis Club of Lancaster Hunter Park Hunter Park it's a big mm -hmm. green sign it's right there on the right and there's an entrance who's going to enter nice parking lot that's down there and then this beautiful playground down there and Joyce when uh, when this was started going I know you were in a lot of this involved in that you ever think that's this is a big project I you could skeptical? not <laughs> imagine us taking on the project and the amount of money we needed to raise considering how many members we yeah had. Right. 90, 90 plus members not a lot I mean, it would take a lot, lot of, of pancake festivals to pay for that that's, part. that's right so really community members and um, organizations and uh, and um, businesses in town sure. all really pitched oh. in so it meant a lot because it meant the community was behind this too and the but ribbon cutting that, that was there were phenomenal, so many people it? that attended the ribbon cutting and we got to see kids actually on the playground yeah so I loved that I yeah, enjoyed the. Fun. I think it was the picture that maybe it appeared in the paper or maybe town crier or the I'm not sure but they say well that didn't look like I said there were as many people behind the camera as there were in front oh, there right. was a, there was twice right. as many people and there was a lot of people a lot that of you people. saw right Right. That was amazing. There was a lot. I don't know how many people. I wish I could have gotten a count, but I don't know. So I think There's next next spring, when the when the weather really breaks, I think we'll get to see much more usage out of that. But I, again, I I'd encourage yeah. any of you to go out there to to Hunter Park out uh, 22 and before you hit Hunter Trace, and it's right there on your right. It's amazing just to look at. And we still have some things to do, right? Sure. I, um, sure. Parking lot needs done. Some there's some other things that need done yet. So. So let, let, let's roll back to this. Here's a big part of the fundraiser yeah, so, right here. So this is really our other big fundraiser for the year. The Pancake Festival is our biggest. This one is our second is just selling these gourmet nuts. Now he isn't this year, but your husband, I believe he's the nut prince. He's now he's the, not no longer the nut king. He's the nut prince and right. Howard Snyderman, Howard Snyderman is, is, the nut, is, the nut, is the nut king. Yeah. So, uh, and, and the numbers on this are fairly staggering too, right? Yeah, and I can't even tell you um, how many it's over a thousand. Cans. I know there are six cans in a case, and they take at to the to the pancake day out there. They take twenty cases, pretty yeah. much sell them out. Yeah, it's amazing. And you almost don't have to sell these things now. I mean, once you've had them once, you know you're going yeah. to get and them. Yeah, and they're next going year. fast. I mean, a yes. lot of the banks have them. A lot yeah. of businesses and they're in town have them. Around a lot they're, of places. And they're you know partner with us and help us do that. Yeah. So they do it for Certainly you know here nothing. Fairfield Federal, Federal, Kerry Federal. James, everybody gets involved. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's a, that's a big part of the memory. So yeah. when you go to the uh, pancake day out there, I'd get those. On an ordinary year, not our hundredth year, yes. we still have big projects that we do. Yeah. And our biggest is a free baseball league for boys and girls that has been going on for how well, many years? Let me I, see. I, bet you I wrote it down. I was going to say sixty. Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Fifty-five, 55 and, and, and years. We'll mention in the Lancaster. name Lou Boyer on this because for many years. When there was a committee, but it was really driven by the late Lou Boyer, uh, this was his project, and now it's still carried on. Every year we have more teams, more players. I mean, it's, it's, down there behind town, it's, it's school well, and the diamond right. down there, yeah, and it's, it's still going on, so gosh, 
and, and some you know some good people in town who have become people in town that have, have played there and yeah. had their children play yeah. there. Yeah, a lot of it was second, third generation, of course. And um, that is really where pancake money goes and nut money. That's our, you know, kind yeah. of our, our fundraisers yeah. go to When the, you don't need projects. all the money going to an all abilities. Yeah, and our, right? yeah, those are the ongoing projects, things like that. And we do um, a lot of book giveaways for young children. What was it? Share of time? What's it called on, on the day? So the day we have the Pancake Festival, and I have to look at this too, because I was with time. The Fairfield County Children's, no, Fairfield County Early Childhood Education Organization. <laughs> gift of Time, as, as Does Joyce the Gift said. of Time gift event. Time. Gift of Time. Right. And um, that it's event a huge, goes on the it, same It's a time. huge event, and it's just the greatest thing. It's free, and there's activities in all the classrooms for the kids to do. It's been a perfect partnership with the Lancaster right. Kiwanis. So we fund a book giveaway, and every child that comes to that um, will get a free book. And there are hundreds. Um, 600 last year, I believe. And we donate tickets. So if I'm a member of Kiwanis and I didn't Which sell... Which you are. <laughs> since I'm a member of Kiwanis and I didn't sell all my tickets, I have the option of just purchasing them. Write a check to Kiwanis, donate them to the gift of time. So when these children are there having their fun with their activities or the adults, they can get a ticket free. They and they have give, a free breakfast. They give them away as door prizes, sure. and we give them quite a few. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those kids come back in and eat pancakes with us. We've got Joan Miller and Joyce Cox, who are kind of the head honchos here for Langster Kiwanis uh, Pancake Festival coming up. And again, it'll be Saturday, December 7th, from 7 to 1 out at uh, Langster High School. And uh, good luck parking there. I'll, I'll tell you that now, depending on when you come, I would come early or perhaps a little later, but in the shank of the day, it's it's it, about all you can handle. Right, with all with that other event going on. Sure. But, um, but people come in and out all yeah. day long so yeah. so I think that's how it works I, I kind of I think know. I kind of think of being out there in the cafeteria when people are eating out there I kind of think of it as like being at the fair or something people get to see people they normally don't get to Only see or, see or yeah. sit with and there's a lot of talk going on out there too right you've been out there you've worked yeah. the the front out there just it, it's it's a kind of a family atmosphere it is a community camaraderie is yes. the best way I can think yeah. of it right now you're yeah. exactly right it's yeah. fun it's fun yeah and again the Qantas members at Wives or husbands, depending on uh, which, which, and in, in, in Joyce's cases. But well, I was going to say Steve is in the club or not. But in your case, it, her husband is in the club. Right. So if, if it's a husband and wife, they help. They bring yeah, spouses in. Your spouse. I, that's where I was going with that. Your spouse, Steve, will come in. He'll be flipping and pancakes. And he'll be flipping pancakes. He's on the too. griddle, isn't he? And yes. see, Dr. Steve Cox. Well, I hope he's qualified to do this. If he can't do it, he's out the he's door. He's experienced. I can tell you he now. did it before. He's done it other. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and we're bringing him back this year. He's, okay. This is not his he first year. He's no rookie. No, no, he's not, not a rookie. Not his first rodeo, as he's, we say. That's so. right. He's not a rookie. So he can right. be a doctor, play sax, and flip pancakes. Is there anything this guy yeah, can do? Yeah, he's a renaissance man. <laughs> well, it's, it's a trombone. Oh, oh okay. Well, that's right. <laughs> he and can't he, play that. He plays that like crazy. Oh, my. And then one other thing that he helps with, a Rising Park Cleanup Day. Oh, no, oh yeah. Well, that's good. So and, that's another so I think project And again, these are Kiwanis projects that the, that the Kiwanis does. does and, yeah. uh, and again, in a non uh, all abilities park year. There are just many projects. The, the Rising Park cleanup, uh, the Little League baseball. Uh, next year too, it's in the spring I think, is a 5K run we're gonna that add, Kiwanis is we're gonna going to have. We're going to add that event. We've never April had 4th. that before. April 4th out at, and it's going to begin and end at the park Hunter at Hunter park Trace. To highlight and the use the bike trail. Mm -hmm, use the bike trail. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I, I'm one, of our, one of the club members I want to mention too, we've only got about a minute left, Mike Tharp. Uh, oh what gosh. a what a big asset right. Tharp has, has been so to to this helpful. whole thing. The parks and just general, they've done so much. When you when you get Mike involved in something, you you, you can just let it go. That was, Mike will get it done. That was a big project, and he did it. Yeah. And yeah. I think we should mention Susan Mark is one of our co-chairs too. Sure. Because she is a worker bee. And yeah. Susan and her husband will be on the grills too. They'll be on too. the grill too. They will You'll be, be able to see yes. all those yeah. another dot. Pancake flipper. We'll be yeah. able to watch that right there. Boy, it's, I'm gonna have to go back and get another degree to flip pancakes. <laughs> I mean, one's not enough. I got it. Anyway, it, it's the Langster Kiwanis Pancake Festival. It's Saturday, December seventh, from seven to one. You can get the nuts out there. Those are be available at the front door. You right. can get tickets from any member. Any, any member or at the door, and they're or the same the price. Same door. price. Yeah, six dollars for adults. Okay. And two dollars for children. Okay. Any Kiwanis member will have them. Uh, again, available at the door. There's no discount or addition. 
uh, by doing that, they're all the same price. And so it's, it's just a fun day to come out and, and have a good time and certainly benefit the community and just, just see. And, and there'll be displays out there, some of the things that Kiwanis does. So, girls, thank you for joining us. It's always fun to have you on. And uh, best of luck December 7th from 7 to 1. We'll Go see you there. Go get them. Thank you so Joan much. And, Joan and Joyce with us here. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back with Garrett Players in just a moment. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Like to be part of Green Machine, keep me busy, and it's it's also important that we we do it together as a group, and we plow and plant, and we we have uh, lots of produce. We have tomatoes like one here, and gourds, cucumbers, squash. Crawbies, beets, microgreens. We also uh, have flower arrangement, and we also sell bags, those tote bags out of animal food bags, and we sell them out in the market, farmers market. It's a special place that keeps people healthy by eating a couple fruits and vegetables. I always show people first time they pick raspberries and green beans. I show them how to do it like they do it wrong. Picking raspberries and green beans is simple, easy for me. When entering some things in the field like pumpkins, the gourds were growing, and everyone likes them. Tasty. Welcome back to Fairfield today, and uh, we want to thank the Kiwanians coming down in their uh, Pancake Festival coming up December 7th. And as we've talked many times, uh, this time of the year as we're out of November or late latter stages of November into December, there's almost one, maybe two events, maybe three events every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the entire month of December. And there are only a limited number of those days to do it. So many things kind of come on top of each other. Something's at one o'clock, and then four o'clock, and then seven o'clock. There's a, there's a whole day of things. Like I say, the Kiwanis pancake thing was December 7th, and that goes from seven to one. Well, uh, again, we might have a conflict here of things, not a conflict of uh, interest, but multiple things going on at once. I've got Marilyn Steiner and, uh, Linda Kaufman with me, and they are the director, Marilyn is director, cast member, Linda Kaufman, of uh, Assisted Living, the musical, The Home for the Holidays. I guess it's The Home. The Home, The, yes. ho the, the home, home for, for the, the holidays. holidays. And it's a musical, and uh, what, again, perfect time of the year, right? Absolutely. And Assisted Living, the musical, is a sequel to what we did twice over the summer, Assisted Living, the musical, this one, The Home for the Holidays brings back many of the same characters. And this time, of course, it's right before Christmas, so they're getting ready in Florida for the holidays at Pelican Roost. Oh, I was going to say, we need to met. What was, what was the line you said with the Pelican Roost? Um, the authors of the play describe it as the party school of retirement communities. <laughs> Break a leg. You don't want to say that there, perhaps. You don't want to say that. But uh, so it, it, it's a musical. It's December 6th and 7th this Friday and Saturday, seven o'clock, both evenings. This weekend, yes. This weekend at the, at obviously at the Fairfield County District Library, just a, a block away from here. It's upstairs in the Garrett. The Garrett players are doing this, and uh, uh, 
And again, it's the cool thing about this is we don't have to worry about selling tickets ahead of time. No. You don't have to worry about having money or anything like that. There is no charge. The, the only uh, caveat is if you've ever been to these, and I hope we're talking to some people who have been or to new people, that'd be fine too. It's limited seating up in the garret up there. There is limited seating, and that's the only thing that restricts anything. There, again, no charge to come. It's at 7 o'clock. But what time is it? The elevator opens at 6.30? Maybe 6:30. earlier now. I didn't know with the food. The elevators to go up, we, we kind of keep the cast 6.30. 630. Um, I believe that they'll start letting people in the doors probably around 6.15, okay. 6 so, o'clock, so depending get there, on the weather. When you get there and, and go up, that, that's what it's all about. So get there early, get a seat. It, you, you'll enjoy it very much. First and come, first seat. First come, first seat. I like that. <laughs> I do like that. Linda, you're in this, and who do you play? I had the thing here. Um, I, I, my character's name is Jackie. Jackie. And, and who is Jackie? Jackie, um, I, I like to think that she lives life to the fullest. She so you're just um, never yourself. misses an op. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. I do say okay. so. Okay. Yeah, Jackie. Um, Jackie doesn't miss an opportunity to have fun. Um, she's she's just very outgoing. She she just loves to be with people, and uh, do her thing. And she has a lot of interests. So a real stretch for you to play this person. Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. It it's 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 fun and um, people are starting to. Uh, I, I I hope I'm not getting typecast, but it's it's a lot. It's a fun part. <laughs> and and Marilyn, you're the director now. You've directed before. We've had you on several times. If you've done this and you're doing this a musical, do you enjoy the musical aspect or or a non-musical play? Do you have a one you like better? Preference for me, I love musicals. Yes. So I have really enjoyed the opportunity to do the musicals. So yeah. And and it's just fun to see people who I never would have guessed in my life could get on stage and sing, really come through and, and do a fabulous job. And and the camaraderie between the cast is really, really fun. Now, to see. now is this done for this one? Is this done a cappella or do you have a pianist there that's kind of playing things? We actually have performance tracks that we purchased oh, okay. from the okay. the that's stage how it fits rights in. company. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and it, it is a relatively short play? It is. It's about an hour and a half long. So um, as we mentioned, getting there early, the Friends of the Library always serve refreshments for us. So this time, refreshments will happen as soon as you go upstairs at 6.30. You have cookies, Christmas cookies, of course, yes. and punch before the show. No intermission. It lasts about an hour and a half. Yeah. And I was looking at the cast of some local folks, some yes. non-local folks. I suppose those are how most casts are made up. There are some local people, but other people come from around in, in contiguous communities, I guess, mm -hmm. come for this. I was able to bring back most of the cast from Assisted Living, the well, musical, but we had to fill a few parts. And in fact, I lost John Picard, wasn't able to make this one, and he told me at kind of the last minute. So I asked, including you, Paul. <laughs> you were you one did of, better. Is this the, I tried is this to recruit the, you. Is this the role Steve No, has? it's no. A Steve that works. It's the part that, it's Rocky, that oh. performs with Linda oh. over here. Oh. And finally, Lucky man. I know, Paul Deem <laughs> and Linda and Paul have been working hard together yeah. to pre prepare for this and I know let's, it's going to be very enjoyable. Well, let, let, let's talk about that a little bit. How, how long has this uh, practice gone on for, for two performances? Realistically just this week. So all this week we had a few performances on Wednesday evenings for anybody that wanted to come from the cast last month but mm -hmm. realistically mm -hmm. this week is uh, the cast received their music a few months in advance so yes. they, they've had their songs to kind of practice on their own and then a lot of them are, are solos. The duets that we have have, like Linda and Paul have gotten together a time or two sure. on their own to yeah. practice their duets. But just not, it. the commitment to Garrett Players is really kind of a short time frame. And Which is it got to be one of the uh, things people like about that, right? That's, exactly. that's something to you. You don't yeah. have to devote it's, six it's months not, of your life. Right. Well, yeah. It, it, usually two weeks for a straight play, um, mm -hmm. you know, a place I've been in. But because it's presented as a staged reading uh, you don't have to memorize your lines you don't have to memorize your songs um, most of the cast members do sure um, but it's everybody says oh my memory my memory uh, of course that that's why they're at Pelican Roost right because of the memory <laughs> but um, but it's right in. there are, uh, each cast member is just allowed to have that um, that I, I want to call it a crutch, but it's just it's just your, like a security blanket sure. for you to know that if you need to look, you can. Now, is, 
it, help me again. I think you used the term. Is that what this is called? Staged reading when you carry the books around? Sure, script yeah. in hand, staged okay. reading. Okay. When mm -hmm. when this first started years ago with the Garrett Players, I used to have Ron Keaton on more often than anybody because right. he was a kind of kind of involved in the beginning there, and and I can remember going to these the first time and seeing that. And, and in my mind, I had this, well, they're going to walk around with books. I mean, it's going to be bulky. You're going to, you don't even no, know. I don't, don't think notice. they even know. You as a cast member even know you have that. But certainly as a, as a person just watching it, it, it's just, you don't even notice that. It's, it's very seamless after Absolutely. a while because you get involved with the play. And the characters in Assisted Living, <laughs> the home for the holidays, are just larger than life. Yes. They they have fun. Their 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 older inhibitions leave. They have <laughs> they have fun, and each character is doing their thing. And within the context of Christmas music, you're going to hear some of the Christmas songs like you've never heard them before. <laughs> Especially thanks a, to Linda. <laughs> perhaps a good representation, you would say. Then, that of is that. that is absolutely true. And I I would, as we're talking about this, also mention that this play would, is. It's really not for kids. I mean, not that there's anything vulgar or really anything like that, but it really would not interest a child to yes. come to see this. So sure. even teenagers, you know, maybe, but it, it definitely Mom and dad has, are in it. That's the only reason. It definitely will have adult appeal. Sure. So it's, it's Assisted Living, the musical, the home for the holidays, and, and it's uh, December 6th and 7th, Friday and Saturday night, this Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock, both nights. No tickets needed. Just get to the library. I'd say get there no later than 6.15. Because the, the elevator and the stairwell opens up at 6.30, and then it's like the gold rush heading it up is, there. It, and it, it is, and people are plotting yes. already now how, yes. how oh, early sure. they might need to come yeah. to get a seat. Because when we yeah. reprised it in June, we did have to close the doors. Wow. Yeah, we, we have limited seating due sure. to fire codes, sure. like every building sure. does. So we filled 150 seats, and that was as much as we could handle. So. Linda, you've done a lot of these. Uh, how did you get the bug for this? Is this something you had in high school or just uh, something hit actually, you later? Actually, I've, I've always attended theater, but I never took the opportunity to put myself on the other side of the stage until I retired and auditioned for a play when the Lancaster Playhouse was brand new, thinking I would just check out how the procedure worked, and golly gosh, I, I got cast. The bug? And I enjoy, I enjoy both sides of the stage. I enjoy behind the footlights. I've, um, you know, I've worked props. I've worked stage crew. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of fits together. And um, wherever the opportunity is, um, and it works for me, then I, I give it a go. And Marilyn, uh, we, we have good camaraderie. And, um, uh, but we all had to audition the first go round. Sure. And is that kind of the same story for you? I know you've always involved in this. You've been involved for years doing this kind of stuff. Were you ever on the other side of the I, director's role? No, no, not really. No. You've so, always enjoyed the directing aspect. I, I guess so. Yes. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that because it, when I was the library director, we had a puppet group. So there were many times when I was behind this, this puppet <laughs> stage as a character. But <laughs> that's as far as my characters you, went as you far as acting. You enjoy directing and, and kind of just seeing it all come together. Oh, yeah. I love this. But I, I love will this let part. me interject here that when somebody is not there, who Marilyn that role. can play every part. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh yeah, and yeah. she knows you everybody's. You the entire. Uh, I she knows every and line, over again. every song, mm. and she can step it's in, fun. which is quite nice. It's well, fun. it sounds like just such a such a fun it's time. Fun. I can just tell you girls have had just a great time mm. in doing this, and uh, and the whole cast is yeah. just just really fun to work with. It works out well sometimes. It just syncs up. Everything's good. So it's it's again uh, this Friday and Saturday, December sixth and seventh. It's Assisted Living the Musical, The Home for the Holidays. So, uh, so that's how we'll think of it, The Home. The and, home. and The Home is named again? Pelican Roost. And the line is? It is the, let me look, the party school for the retirement community. <laughs> I kind of think that says it all. So Linda Kaufman, Marilyn Steiner, thank you for joining us. It's, it's going to be a great time. Uh, break oh, a leg. absolutely. And is in a senior citizen's home, perhaps we shouldn't say that. I'm not sure. Well, but we have doctors on staff. <laughs> <laughs> They've got it all covered. And we have the meds. So no. we, we, are, we are well protected and, um, as they will say, well everything to 
Very good. Hope to see you at the roost. Sure. See you at the roost. Linda and Marilyn, thank you for joining us. It's, it's always a great time here. The Garrett players, they do such a great job. Uh, you'll enjoy it very much. December 6th and 7th, 7 p.m. both nights at the, the library, just down the block from us here. So get there early and get a seat. Starts at 7 o'clock. And that's our show on Fairfield today. Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home.